play. Kids don't know, and your kids, I will assist you if need be, but uh, no, um, I'm just trying not to know. <laughs> it's a hard no. <laughs> I will assist, but no. Fuck you. No. To be honest, I may take you up on the assist part, well, maybe someday. That's fine. Just give me a warning so I can pad things up. <laughs> yeah. This is what I like about this group. It's like, we're willing to help begrudgingly. Just give us time to, you know. Process and... Yeah. I if I can I actually like this better. Let's try this. Oh, yeah. I also added a little, uh, like a little skid thingy uh, in between the shuttle and the first floor of the ship. It was supposed to be like a, for like a cutout. So you could use that and just like. Pull it along everywhere. It's like an image. I can send you that like separately if you want. Uh, yeah, I'd be down with that. All right. Um, eventually, actually, wait, I no, I already did send you that. Might you might have. Check, yeah, just check past ones later. How about this for a lock token, by the way, guys? I like fancy. it. No, that's actually much better. Yeah. Is you tend to lock things electronically. Yeah, get your city lock out of here. This is a <laughs> sci-fi environment. <laughs> we ain't doing D&D &D no more. Damn it. <sighs> okay, so um, just to start off, uh, if those of you who are interested in how to upgrade a ship, etc., would be willing to take a look at the ship uh, sheet primary so that you guys can find out how to do it. Mm -hmm. and you'll need to go to the ship fittings area and see what the requirements are yeah. and power and mass, all that good stuff, and cost. In this case, you're looking for an extended med bay. We'll use that as an example. Um, for that, you need one power, one mass. You currently have one mass to play with. Uh, shouldn't we, so of our current fittings, it only takes up, uh, 12 mass. Right. You have cargo space. You can reduce your amount of cargo space in there. So right. Okay. Go here and say, okay, I only want four cargo space. You'll be up to four mass instead. And then you can use a modification below from below that table the ship fitting it's a little ways down to uh convert mass into power but yeah so if that's something you want to do that's totally doable right okay i'm looking at the uh i am looking at the goddamn weapons or wasn't looking at my other which means they're taking up more mass than i thought they were cool yeah, weapons are heavy and they also take a lot of power which i learned when making mechs uh <laughs> Um, we could, if you guys want to dedicate space for the, uh, the shuttle, we could do that by just switching to a cargo lighter, which just takes two mass off of there, which is about what we were judging that, um, shuttle to be anyway. So it's not a big deal. Hmm. Um, just to put it there as a thing. Um, and then you also have the option of modifications, which are down here. One of the examples. And the one you might would be wanting to look at is power strunk power trunk streamlining. Um ten percent costs ten percent of the hull and one component, which you do have. Um, and you can lose up to five points of mass and gain twice as many points of free power. So one Point of mass for two power. I'm gonna let you guys kind of think on that. We'll say on your little journey back to uh, to Strickland. No, yeah. that pretech could be used for a lot. Uh, yes, it could, but I don't know about spending all we've got right now on just. That. that said, 
couple of things that having power for would be very handy. We kind of need to do something with it. Or need something about it. I got a question. Are there shields in this game, or is it just all hull? There are. Kind of. Um, there are... Let me go to it real quick. Uh, specifically for um, s- ships, uh, if I remember right, there are various defense arrays. Um, I think the closest would be like the gravity displacer. Um, but for personal use, uh, there may be some pre-tech that is not shown in here that I've come up with. So you might run into something at some point, but we'll see. However, um, for Max, I think that there was actually something. Where is designing? There we go. For Max, there's MES shielding and also yep. uh, a silhouette dampener, which makes you harder to see from far away. Uh, there mm-hmm. is, let's see. There's no like. There is no Halo slash FTL outer shield layer, unfortunately. That being said, there is one other one, which is uh, it's considered power armor, and it's called a field emitter panoply, which is a, effectively a shield, uh, in a sense. Well, it yeah, just raises that's... your AC to insane. Um, but yeah. I was attempting to make... Your... I was attempting to figure... Yeah. To bullshit one for Lexi, but that cost a lot of money. Yep. Um, the best, like, there's, there's sort of active shields, like, I guess, an anti-missile system sort of thing, where it's more kinetic uh, with emitters. Uh, there aren't really any passive energy shields, as far as anybody been able to find directly. How about uh, magnetic shields or anything like that? I guess it would depend on what your definition is. Uh, of more like a, a repulsor thing, so an anti it would be anti-magnetics. Sure. If if the thing that is flying at you at high speed is magnetic, perhaps there could be something that was a strong dipole, sort of magnetic uh uh, you know, would repulse that magnet, but the problem is that only works against magnets that are a si- yeah, are monopoles. Air, air items, yeah, yeah. Because well, no, it only works against monopoles because if the thing's magnetic, it usually has a north and south pole, and if you're only pushing against the south pole, then the north pole is going to sw- flip towards you, and it's going to keep on going. It might well, slow down a bit, but you could you could switch it to uh, a pulsating so. When it... Okay, then it'll spin. Yeah, and it'll, <laughs> it'll be consistent force, unfortunately. Yeah, but if um, when you, if you're pushing on it with a force that's pulsating, it's going to start spinning and it'll lo- it'll start losing its momentum, so it'll be reduced damage when it hits you. Essentially, that's something that it's not in the book. I'll say that. Um, oh, I'm okay. not so discounting it as something that could be built. Potentially. But I think uh, this tends to go with more, uh, how would I put it? Let's see. Okay. Actually. So basically, it looks like it, it's, it's a lot like, of it's pre-tech. Yeah. So we can get like maybe a flak gun to for anti-missiles like that. Uh, yeah, you could get something like that. You could get a laser system okay. for anti-missiles uh, for your ship. The one thing is, this ship, as it stands right now, what I will point out, like, it's pretty well kitted out. You're pretty close to what this ship can do. So if you want a ship with more capabilities, or is bigger or something, or, you know, you might need to go to a a larger hull class. Now... I could argue that you guys, I mean, and I'd be willing to to go with this, that you guys could get some increases in places that make sense. Um, 
by say moving a power plant from a patrol boat into a uh, free merchant or something like that into this free merchant keeping the same hull. But that's kind of where we're at with it. Almost through. We don't have a lot of space for new stuff, but we also don't have a lot in terms of, like, we have a million credits. That's not a lot, believe it or not. Uh, that's enough to kit out. That's that's enough to get the ship that we have, and in terms of what we can do with it, that's enough to pay for the ship that we have, uh, and have a bit left over. But it's not enough to. I don't think, like, uh, go up a tier or anything. It's no, but if you did a trade in with this ship and then threw down what we had for money, it would probably be enough to get a really good you know down payment or something like that yeah uh, you can you can always finance <laughs> yeah yeah you, you don't have you to outright can finance that is a thing you can do if we need a down payment on a patrol boat for example that might be something we can do uh patrol boat, you could if you found somebody who liked you well enough you might even be able to go for something maybe as large as a corvette with a million you're looking at you want twenty percent, thirty percent of the cost for a down payment, at least in this world, universe, whatever you know what I mean. I do words. I swear I do words. No. So I, I say we put down payment on the small battleship. I have friends in the, in the connections. I call everybody. We get battleship. It's be perfect. We be part of the of the spaces. Yeah, but. Look, if you're trying to get a patrol boat, that's not going to have the cargo space that we need to perform some of these jobs. Uh, it's also probably not going to be able to go as fast. It's probably also not going to have some of the luxuries we're used to. That said, it, it might just be, you know, uh, pull out the heart to get to the... I forget the saying. Anyways, uh, when have we ever used the fuel scoops? Because as it stands, they're just this big bunch of tubes at the bottom of our ship that uh, doesn't seem to be doing much. I know it's, it's a it's safety measure. Usually but... for when, uh, you know, pilot does, uh, miscalculates navigation and then we end up uh, somewhere we're not supposed to be. We have no fuel yet, yet uh, sort of thing. But since when is this motherfucker going to run out of or run out of fuel or miscalculate. Well, it's possible. It doesn't happen a lot, but it's possible. Uh, uh, do we have well, scoops in the shuttle? Out of character. I forgot we had that. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. Because it takes more time than buying fuel, and it's not as efficient, I don't think. Uh, it's well, then we just No, it takes like a couple days. Oh, wait, wrong game. Yeah. Even then, if we jump to a starless system, we're fucked anyways. Like, if we if we jump to deep space, the fuel scoop's not gonna help. The fuel okay. scoop is for budgeting, but if we're at a point where budgeting fuel isn't necessarily a problem, I'd prefer to be able to store more fuel or rather use fuel more efficiently and do more jumps, which getting rid of the fuel scoops will allow us to do. Captain, fuel scoops or no fuel scoops? I am sick of uh, bickering over this. Well, one thing first. <clears throat> Does our shuttle have fuel scoops? Yet. Uh, I checked it out earlier. doesn't seem to have anything like that. You've got enough to get you out in, you know, out of orbit. Uh, or the outer solar orbit, I mean, but it doesn't have much aside from that. Okay. And the cap went to go take plates downstairs, so she'll be right back. (laughs) 
Captain has locked herself in the room with a deep dish. Uh, yeah, I just don't think it's worth it to keep around when we could have more utility and some extra goodies, is all. I mean, Captain, you even admitted you forgot we had that. It's not particularly important, I don't think. So yes, you can remove or add whatever you want within those pr the parameters. The shuttle is really meant for inter-system travel at best. All right, next the fuel scoops then. Fuck it. Well, Cap wanted right. to know if we can like reduce it so it's only like half a fuel scoop or something. That Probably. just make it less efficient, which yeah. would make it less useful. Yep. Okay. Like, if we were doing more exploring, then I could see it. But if we're just doing, like, missions around civilized areas, then it's probably fine to get rid Believe of me, if I had my own vessel, it would have fuel scoops. Uh, but for this, we're not going to be doing much out-of-civilization, uh, you know, reconnaissance. And if we are, we're bringing enough fuel for the trip back. That said... If you run out of fuel, you get out and push. Okay. If I can get that makeup and working, that might actually work. Anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start dismantling. And I'll take him off of the thing. Cap votes to get rid of him. All right. Damn near unanimous, then. Well, that, we've got quite a bit more to work with. Uh, how much can I get for selling the fuel scoop uh, modification with, you know, as much... As I can get for it. It sells for about... Actually, no, that's... Uh, fuel scoops are good for a... Uh, frigate. Okay, so never mind. Uh, fuel scoops would sell for about 5k. About half price. Alright. In that case... Uh, it's not much, but it's something. I'll add it to the crew funds. 2,500, so... Total credits are now... One million twenty seven hundred uh twenty seven thousand rather five hundred. So with that gone, we have quite a bit of space left, which means we have space for your extended med bay, as well as the smuggler panels. Uh Sorry. and uh we also have enough for a couple of things. Uh, advanced nav computer just to make sure we don't fail a jump could be useful. That's unlikely, but okay. We also have uh, so we'd have to get rid of either the cargo hold or the med bay in order to get a drive to. Or you can, yeah, you can cut down on your cargo bay. A bay. Oh, yeah, cargo bay. Yeah. To uh, to gain free power, basically you're getting you're putting power generators in various places. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, no, we would just need the extra mass, which means yeah, we can totally uh, if we get rid of one cargo space, we can take a drive to upgrade as well as the uh, expanded mid bay and the smuggler's hold. And are we considering cargo space the like actual like yellow outlined areas, or is it just the number of like you can have this much cargo space? I guess probably both. It, right? It's it's kind of a comedy. It's for flavor, I guess. Okay. The um, yellow space, but yeah, you could pack that place full if you wanted to. Well, we haven't. We could fill the thing yet, have we? No, no we haven't. Done no, any, let's like no, a full yeah. trade let's, run. Yeah, let's take the drive too, because that I think cuts our time in half, right? Which means I can then cut that time in half. That's the time in half, and gives us an extra jump, I think, right? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, yes, yeah, so you can go two sectors at a time. Yep. For the same. Yep. Uh, time so it doubles it all right yeah, yeah i'm all for that i have a feeling that that's probably going to be coming in useful seeing as a lot of us and our characters have a really awesome uh character i mean charisma about them i guess that gets them in trouble oh. good for running yeah. good yeah. for running good for running basically oh what I'm yeah okay yeah uh interesting the drive to upgrade uh oh it's one one for a fighter Damn, okay. That makes this more interesting. Uh, 
Uh, so the drive to upgrade is 2 2 for our frigate, which sucks. Uh, it also means, well, we can get the smuggler's hold, so we're going to need another power to get the med bay, which the only thing that takes power is the weapons, which we can, if we want to, try and find a weapon that uses less power. No, because that make it worse, right? Not necessarily. Depends on the no. weapon, of course. Uh, uh, for example... Sand thrower is a very utility-based weapon. Yeah, uh, very correct, good, but... uh, I must say. Uh, multifocal laser uh, can be good. Uh, I mean, could be better. Have you ever heard of a Reaper battery? Duh. Uh, well, one of those would cost us just enough power that we can uh, add in the med bay, as well as replace the multifocal laser with the Reaper cannon. For Problem being, of course... You haven't? What is it? Just a better cannon? Uh, no. The Reaper cannon is kind of clumsy. Uh, it, what it effectively does is it allows for a... It shoots a bunch of charged particles at the, uh, the ship, which... It's in shotgun. Yeah. It, which it's can fry their... Two shotguns. <laughs> <laughs> which can fry their systems. Uh, and occasionally... Uh, you know, it, it helps. Problem being, of course, not very good against armor, but not much is that doesn't take that much power. Well, I, I kind of like having the options of, like, you know, the, the scatter shot of the, the sand thrower versus the more precise multifocal laser or something better than that. Well, in that case... Convert one extra cargo space instead. Well, that takes pre-tech and... I don't know. Uh, and me if... and Oswald are protective over the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll also well, note just as a... the smuggler thing, that's fine. I just, I'll also just note idea if something could be useful. just as a bonus, uh, the Reaper battery does 3D4. Well, I like the name Reaper battery. It just sounds great. It because you can say arm the Reaper battery, but and if you then if you say arm the Sand Blaster, which sounds better? That's my viewpoint. I think Milky Volta Laser is the one we'll be replacing, which isn't that bad of a name itself. Well, but like I said, it's nice to have the utility of having one that's sort of a wider shot and then one that's more focused in and gets you better utility out of the weapons. You can choose the right tool for the job. Armor penetration with the laser. It's actually one of the best yeah. around. Um, at least for a time, for now. I mean, there are better out there, but it's pretty solid. Well, the only thing that'll... Uh... Cost us less power than the Milky Multifocal Laser is the Reaper battery, and the Sand Thrower barely consumes anything. We got Twin Sand Thrower if you really wanted to. If we wanted That's to. Like a terrible idea. It's not bad. Uh, to, to be honest, it would actually be kind of uh, cheaty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it depends on like... if they have armor or not. Yeah. If they have armor, uh, you're going to be doing very little damage to them. That's you guys true. have not fought so far. You guys have fought shitty fighters that aren't very good, and civilian ships for the most part. You have not fought an armored ship, like an actual combat ship. I will point that out. That is something you guys would know. Yeah, uh, uh, I will say a nuclear missile is only about a fifty thousand credit. They're also illegal on most planets. So. Like, I don't think you understand what I mean when I say illegal. When I mean illegal, I mean you'll get thrown into a pit and stomped on until you're dead illegal. Let it's them not... try to, to, to do that to me. I don't think so. I think something <laughs> will blow up before that happens. Yeah, it'll also take you with it. It's not... Also, if you do blow up, then everybody who knows that you blew it up will want to do the same thing that they tried to do to you when you blew them up, and you don't have the same thing that will blow them up anymore. Not if I blow them up. I don't think you're understanding what I'm, you won't. It's a one-time use. It doesn't... That's the point. Anyways, if we were to go up against a more, you know, armored ship, we might actually have Kind of a problem. Uh, to be one hundred percent honest, the weapons are fine as is. Like you really don't need to change them up, and we sh we're, we shouldn't rather. The the other option you guys have is to kind of put your eggs in one basket, 
and remove both for a single weapon of of you know a different kind. I mean, mag spike array comes to mind, but but then what, um, what's a knock do? That shit is expensive. <laughs> so yeah, miss. <laughs> Yeah, there's uh there's a, I mean, there are a few choices, but yeah, you guys have your first kind of chunk of change, but it's not actually that much money, admittedly. Uh, yeah, really, I don't think we should focus on like redoing everything, just a couple things right now, and then just, you know, work on yeah. getting better jobs and, and yeah. then really working on the ship. Well, with the drive to, uh, we can do that. It'll cost us, let me check. Drive to uh, hundred thousand, I think. Yeah, I think updating uh, the drive would be absolutely fantastic, as yep. well as whatever changes we've already had done here with like the rooms swapped out and shit. I think we just right. should just go with that for now. So upgrading the drive puts us at nine thousand uh, nine hundred and twenty-seven thousand five hundred credits, uh, which works. And then we can also add the smuggler bay if we want to. It'll cost basically nothing. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, it could be useful, but if it takes place of something else, then I say we don't do it. Uh, it's it's cheap, and the mass cost is one, and we have two spare. Wait, okay. for, for what now? What are we doing? Like smuggler compartment. Oh, yeah, of course. I thought that was part of the... the... Uh, I, yeah. I didn't yeah. lock it in yet, but yeah, we oh. can do that. Yeah, yeah, do that yeah, too. Whatever. 25k Fuck each. Uh, 25k. So Sorry, that we can minutes. pass that with change. We have... Yeah, you could get two if you wanted. Uh, well, we could do out of the smuggler bay and then just put some cargo space back in. Yeah, that's fine. Did we already calculate the cost for, like, the the little armory and the the extra shit for the rooms? Armory is 100 thou. Also, repairs need to be accounted for. Uh, uh, 100,000. 15, armory. Uh, there we go. What is it? Is this an advanced med bay or just a regular one? It's uh, it's an extended. Okay. Uh, technically, actually, we don't have the space for an extended one yet. What we do right now? Hmm? Oh, right on the math thing. Shit. Well, the the we need more power for the med bay, which that's yeah, the one power thing we're lacking. Huh? What about that power upgrade? The Power upgrade cost the free tech, uh, but we can do it if we deem it necessary. Hold on. Who's math boy? Because I'm not doing this. Okay, I'll I'll. So, if we want the, uh, if we want the thing, if we want the. Uh, Med bay. We can use the what is it called? Uh, what's the thing? Power, whatever's power cells. Uh, the, yeah, you can convert one mass or uh, up to five into double the amount of power. It is called. Yeah, so where is that on the thing? Something engine, I think. Power trunk streamlining. Oh, that's the one. Okay. Uh, is that in a, a different thing? Where is that? It's below the example starships. Um, it's example starship mods. Uh, fittings. Or not, is it not oh, fittings? Keep going. Keep going. Well below that. Gotcha. Okay. Page 109. In not in the PDF, but on the thing, you know what I mean? Yep. So, uh, yeah. Gotcha. So, um, the other thing you guys could do, and I didn't think about this, uh, it's an option specialized mountings do not cost um, components, but choose a specific weapon or fitting when this mod is installed. Chosen fitting requires only half the normal power and mass per fitting installation, rounded down to a minimum of one. It costs 10% of your hull value. Uh, okay. So what that would do... Uh, wait, 
So what's whole value mean per se? Cost of your ship. Huh? Cost of your ship. Gotcha. So for a six hundred and sixty seven thousand um, dollar ship. It wouldn't be exactly ship. that. It's a it's just the hull value. So So for the there. thing. So that's five five hundred K. Five hundred K fifty thousand. Fifty thousand. Uh, fifty thousand ain't bad for that. If we, if I streamline the multifocal laser, what that'll do is that'll just increase our power by three, two, three, rounded down, two and a half, rounded down. Oh, my bad. Yep. Sorry. Rather, uh, which will give us else. enough power for not only the med bay but also just in the trunk if we need it, which I think is worth it. Yeah, do it. All right, sure. I'll get to work on streamlining the thing. I'll get rid of the fifty thousand. Uh, I'm gonna need a calculator for this. Let's see, eight hundred and two thousand five hundred minus fifty thousand. Seven hundred fifty-two thousand five hundred. Yep. Do we also do repairs and costs and shit? And we well haven't done repairs yet. Working okay. on it. That's a further fifteen thousand. For repairs. Uh, let's see. Extended mid bay. Okay, we've got two power and plenty of mass left if we want anything else. But let's do repairs first. You got the essentials. Extended med bay is a further 50,000. Uh huh. So easy Maybe enough for that. Actually, yeah, I think it is, yeah. Sorry. Uh, I'll check. Let's see. It's in med bay. Yep, 50. Uh, which means you've got uh, 700. Uh, or, yeah, 700,000 left for repairs. Repairs are fairly cheap, if I recall correctly. 15,000 off of the top of that, and that'll get you your 20. I already updated your hit points. Gotcha. So, and then armory, I think, then that's it. I already did that. Oh, you did? Okay, cool. Yeah, I think that's it, then. Uh, although, armory isn't on the thing. With all, yeah, you can just add it. It's not costing anything. Uh, so, that minus 15,000... Is six eight seven five hundred. Uh, which means we could buy another one of these fucking ships and we would have cash to spare. Well, your ship values change now, but yeah. I well yeah, but still. We could yeah, buy one of the ships. Your, your, your debt is not uh, has not changed. But mm -hmm. you uh, are coming through the month and you will need to pay on it or you can pay it in full if you want to. Um, but you you do need a payment here at the end oh, of the month. I just realized. Uh, uh, mods for the ship cost half for me if I'm the one doing them, which means that uh, add, power add production. 25. Yeah. Yep. So you're still over 700. Not bad. And how much do we owe left for the ship payment? 417,000. So really, we, we have the option of just wiping the debt right out. Mm -hmm. Which is not a bad option. Uh, although, just would in give case, us a lot of spending power, though. Everyone look at what they want for anything else. Uh, we could get a uh, cryo bay. We could get a vehicle bay. We could get... Uh, let's see. That has a class of frigate or lower for mm -hmm. ships, and then obviously you have your own personal stuff. If you guys want to split it up that way, it's your choice. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to set up for surveying or something like that, you got a survey sensor array to grab or whatever you want. Um, if it says special in cost, we'll need to talk before you decide to go for it, which is the psionic anchor point. Teleportation drive, uh, system drive you could do. I also noticed the workshop wasn't added to the thing, so I'm just going to do that real quick. Yep. All right. So that's that'd be 500 credits for that, because it would be would have been doubled, but it 
shouldn't be. You already uh, was... one. Is it doubled? Yeah, on the cost, that's what that's for. For the Astra, I thought it was more than double. If that was, if it's only double, then we have a bit more cash to spend. No, I've been going with doubled every every time I put out a number. Okay, I've been doubling it, so yeah, I'm sure it's fine. I think I, the main one that I think was the thing was I said a hundred thousand for the drive two upgrade. I thought it was times ten for the higher. I think it's doubled. Let me double check that myself then. Um. Oh yeah, these costs are multiplied by ten when the fitting is installed. There we go. Yeah, I was looking at mass and power, mm -hmm. uh, which are doubled uh, for Correct. various sizes. So in that case, you actually have so that'll be five thousand, and then you can yeah. My bad. Uh Okay. Honestly, I say we should pay like half of the ship's debt and then just pay out everybody else with the rest and then yeah. go for a job after that. Yeah, I was thinking something similar. Like still get everybody paid for the for the job. Well, we'll say that the work will take you a little bit of time on the station. So I I'm kinda letting you guys do the the um I don't want to put this the let's let everybody kind of work on the ship stuff and start thinking about buying stuff. Um, for the purposes of this, Johnny, you do have calm access to the ship. So we'll just say you guys can talk and Johnny, you are in a dark room uh, with a ladder up to essentially a trap door. It looks like a cellar somewhere. Um, um real, and are left alone real quick before we jump to him can i just ask like uh wh where where are we at in relation to the planet that he's on like i don't, I don't know how long we're gonna leave him there oh orbital okay so we could take the shuttle down you could jump on the shuttle and head back yes it would okay, be good. an uncomfortable trip as you guys have found in the past but it's not nearly going to be the you know the full like what full day that you guys had to do last time Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I would let him know that like we were in orbit, not on the planet anymore, but like we could get down there if we needed to. So just so that let me double check my. I'm pretty sure it's orbital on this one, so let me grab it here. Otherwise, it's definitely a solo adventure that Tronny's on. It's like good luck. I see uh, here that there is a special thing here that only requires one pretext, which which we have called teleportation. Sorry, you're, not you're at Walker Aeon. Yeah. Yeah, you don't. You got to find a specific person to put those in. That's why it's considered special pricing. Good luck finding the person that can actually build te fucking teleportation pads. You guys are at Walker Aeon ship uh, shipyards, not Strickland. My bad, but yes, you are. Uh, I would say ten hours away. Um, you're sort of. Uh, you're sy you're in a system spaceport, not a. Uh, direct orbital okay. from Hesselo. but it's it's ten hours away. You know, you can you can get down there, um, get everybody, and get yourself shipped back up, no problem. Um, as the retrofits and all are going to take a few days. Okay, just straight up. Uh, that being said, one of the things about Walker Aeon, which is kind of nice, is that they have sort of basic basic stuff for travel. Um, basic equipment. They don't really carry much in the way of weapons or armor other than like essentially secured clothing, that sort of thing. And, you know, you're average in some ammo here and there. So if you want anything big, it's really a ship focused place. You can get ship fuel, you can get, um, uh, life support slash food and that sort of stuff and basic equipment there, but you can't get anything specialized. You'll need to head back to Heslo to do that anyway. Like I said, the only reason I was sa was saying what I was saying is that, Jirani, you are actually in on this conversation with the crew. Ah. Oh. You're left alone. You have data pad access, comm access to the crew, 
well, they're all talking about this, so you are not left alone. You, 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 you're not without a voice, at least at the moment. So, if you have something you want the party to shop for you for, that's an option because you're not allowed up on to the uh, to the midtown or definitely not fucking high town, which is where most of the goods, if they're if they're especially like uh, high powered electronics and stuff, are gonna be. Just so you know. So. If you guys want to pay off half the debt on the ship, that's fine. Um, you can note that down. I'd like you to note it below the debt itself. So just paid X amount. Um, actually, I'll just put. And we're still doing the uh, thing where we where the the ship itself actually has a has a portion of the payout as well, right? It's all in the ship account currently. So whatever you guys want to do, if you guys burn say two hundred thousand on the debt, which is a little just under half, you guys would still have five hundred thousand between all of you to play with. Um, and if you wanted to leave a, an extra hundred thousand in on the ship, that still gives you four hundred thousand to play with. It's up to you guys how you want to do it. I will be listening. I will not be talking for the next couple of minutes because I need to throw shit at walls. Apparently. Um, cool. I just got to move some stuff around, but I'll be listening. Um, so if you guys want to come up with that and then we'll get into the sort of narrative story stuff, cause, uh, while you guys are going to Walker Aeon, ju jumping in the shuttle and headed back to Hesselo after getting, you know, the people to start working on stuff. Um, Jirani, we're going to be picking up with you at that point, uh, or as they're doing that. But in the meantime, uh, we'll just say that you guys are slating, you're setting up the appointments for all this stuff um, on your way back. All right. So what the fuck is the plan planet side, out of curiosity? Try not to fucking die. I mean, yeah, but you know, I meant for us, like, I think we'll swoop in before Tarani dies. <laughs> yeah, we're either gonna try to extract him or act, depending on what kind of intel he's getting himself mm -hmm. into. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, is everybody good with the general consensus of of uh, paying half the half the ship debt and then? Paying out everybody else after that. Yeah, I'm that going works. to forego the half my share for uh, paying off the shit debt. All right. Okay. So you're a rich kid. That's uh, some interesting math to work out later. And <laughs> I, I definitely think we should continue giving the ship its own pay slip as well with everybody else, so that way it kind of pays for itself as far as like most shit. So that. Uh, our ship debt divided by two is two hundred and eight uh, thousand five hundred, which neatly actually fits pretty well into the ship account, except it doesn't. It rolls over by one, which makes this interesting. Uh, you're gonna get a second calculator for this seven hundred and seven thousand five hundred minus two hundred and eight thousand five hundred is four thousand. Nine hundred, or sorry, four hundred ninety-nine thousand credits, which is nice. All right, uh, so then we have to split that. What? How many of us? Are one, there? two, three, four, five, six, seven ways plus the ship. Uh, well, no, I removed half the ship's debt from the what we got already, so that's yeah, done. It's like seventy thousand so ahead. Uh, do that by seven. That is seventy-one thousand two hundred eighty-five. <laughs> I'm going to round it up to 86 because it's 285.71428517149. Uh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, I don't want those many pennies. Okay. Uh, actually, no, I could do something here. So we're going to do that. We're going to... No, fuck it. We're just going to round that to 71,285 to each of you. Uh, but then 
we're going to divide that by, uh, whoops. So 7,100 and yeah. seven, one, two, eight, five to everyone divided by two is three thirty five thousand six hundred and forty two which if we div round that up because it's two point five to three we remove that two hundred eight thousand uh three five four eight four seven three so our debt with the Jirani's half added to the total having lies at one thousand or sorry one hundred and seventy two thousand eight hundred and fifty seven exactly credits everybody receives a total of seventy one thousand two hundred and eighty six credits except for Jirani who receives thirty five thousand six hundred and forty two credits Wait. God, that's so much cash. Oh, so the ship account is bust. So that's currently at zero. So then we should put some into the regular ship's account then. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, is it, uh, well that's... I'm going to... Do that with my funds. I always try and keep one month ahead in the ship's account just because so I right. slip that in there. How much are you putting in then? Uh, uh, let me find the thing again. I always just do one month worth. Because I like from jobs and oh. stuff, I've been just stowing away one month's worth in there. A one month payment is 17,375 credits. I'm going to put that in there. Okay, so yeah, put that in the ship account. And then we'll, when the day comes, we'll remove that. Because uh, honestly, I don't even need this much money. <laughs> like, tax doesn't need that much money at all. Uh, Jeroni, right. do you have your total? Yes, so I'm at a, like 41,672. Cool, because I need my calculator to add up my current credits with the credits I'm getting. Lex is going to make a call to Chance, that crazy guy that she bought that gun from way back when, and she's going to send like all the money she's got and be like, give me something good. Oh, no. Oh, my God. No. Oh, no. no. We don't even know well, what we're going back there. That's interesting. That just covers the cost of this gun. That's several hundred thousand cheaper, or tens of thousands, whatever cheaper. No, no, no. I'll, I, I will have Lexi message Chance, but yeah, not that. Oh, didn't you need to finish paying off? The... No, you already you paid off the gun in full. Who's keeping track of um, ship funds? Uh, it's it's horizon. kept track of. We're good. Yeah. Okay. Um, add another ten grand to it. To the ship fund. Yes. All right. All right. You got it, Tex. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. Just didn't want to overrate you if you're doing it right now. Yeah, just making sure. Right, it's now at 27,375. Okay. You know, um, with these funds and the uh, the carcass of a mech that we got, I could probably put that mech together. I could Over probably like blitter year. break it also. <laughs> Over a month. It would take a month. It would take me one minute. Also, <laughs> I would uh, I'll probably contact uh, fucking Oz about maybe getting together and making a black sled or a, yeah black sled yeah the software bit's more your thing but i can get together the, the hardware you yeah. that's for my ship back if it's possible uh lexi does want to do some very light shopping for some supplies yeah the by the way it has that here uh i still do have notes that you wanted some personal shields which is going to be a bit more money, but considering the payday we just got, shouldn't be too much of an issue. The shield trade rate, there's a. Uh, I, I have I've seen one once. 
and the man was a fucking machine. It was amazing. Uh, I just feel that I, it, it's probably very much so not common. I, I have not seen one elsewhere. That's correct, and I'm saying that I won't be able to get one in your hands. Well, on your body. Uh, if you can find a connection or something of the sort, yes, we can talk. Oh, for sure. Well, what I would be making is a force pavis, which is basically a small little shield that you attach to your arm, and it projects a uh, hard light in a direction that would allow you to basically block an attack with just your arm. So not the full body uh, shield? Uh, negative. That's a bit above even your pay grade. Uh, Interesting. And it's also wildly expensive, not just in, uh, you know, uh, credits, but also parts, which are... The... How much do you estimate the parts and cost to do, to be, to do this uh, arm shield? The, she the first Pavis is going to cost you another 4,500 credits. Uh, I'll give you five. Cheers. I am uncomfortable holding this much money. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all digital, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, if we're doing some shopping, Lexi gave me enough credits to start work on the Force Pavis. All right. So who's it what now? Uh, it's basically like an energy shield or a hard light shield kind of thing. Gotcha. Yeah, like the yeah, like an energy like shield, shield, not like a wraparound. Shield. Yes. Imagine like the Reinhardt shield from Overwatch, sort of thing, except smaller to a much smaller degree. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Like the yeah. Gungan shield that they have. Yeah. Kinda. The little ones. Yep, but Captain America style, stuck to your arm. Right. Yeah. Yep. Well, no, they they had some that were like. Yeah, yeah I guess they little did. Little ones. Mandalorian shields that are like, just like like Ta in the future, like cyberpunk Ta. Lexi <laughs> yeah. actually walks back to to Oz and says, "Oh, actually, uh, I give you the extra thousand to for uh, testing because uh, there have been uh, issues in the past with me wearing uh, power armor where I, uh, you know, burst out of it when I flex. So we may have to do some, you know, testing to make sure I don't fucking break it when I flex my goddamn arm." Uh, all right. Just as a point of reminder, it's not an armor piece. It's literally a band you strap to your arm. So unless you can flex your forearm with enough strength to snap leather, it's not going to be a problem. <laughs> oh, no. This is Lexi we're talking about. Lexi just like <laughs> looks at you <laughs> blankly. Bye -bye over here. I'll make it elastic. It'll be fine. Anyways. <laughs> okay, um, okay. Just um, making sure. Look, best case scenario, it's still going to be a little over a week ahead. All right, uh, so is there a shop in the station here? Uh, yeah, it has some basic, mostly ship supplies, but okay, what do you? It depends on what you're looking for. I mean, you do uh, know like, that back like, on the planet, there's shops galore. So. Right. Yeah. Uh, I was just thinking, like, uh, like an extra power cell or two. Yeah, that you can do. Okay. Yeah, I'll grab. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll get to power cells type. All right. A. Um. The other thing that you would know, Thunder, about the Force Pavis, is mm -hmm. that it works great against bullets and high speed shit. But if you have something slow, like if you have a knife and you move it very slowly through it, right, that will get it's... through it. <laughs> oh, like the shields from Doom. Dune. Ex exactly like the shields from Dune. Yeah. I like that. Uh, I'll just let her, I'll let her know. This is bulletproof, not knife proof. It's but bulletproof I think... and most knife proof. But if somebody knows what the fuck they're doing, All they right. might have a problem. Yeah. If yeah, they know it's... what the fuck they're doing, the shield probably won't help to begin with. Yep. There it's you go. That scene from uh, Saving Private Ryan, where the dude slowly stabs the other dude. That's not going to help. Because I think that was yeah, that was Saving Private Ryan. No, it might happen, but it'll just stop like a centimeter in when the Lexi starts flexing and the knife can no longer move in. <laughs> it bounces out with, you know, fucking ricochet, you know, 50 cal force for some reason. Going full JoJo here. Cartoon. Yeah. But yeah, uh, oh, it's, 
I'm going to I'm going to reinforce that cartoon theory pretty hard here when we start. <laughs> <laughs> so I just well, figured I'd give you that my up. Gundam. <laughs> <laughs> Working uh, on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Karate ends up getting super fucked and has look to live in a cybernetic home? body. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's miniaturizing it. I want a Gundam. <laughs> you could do that. Do you, you have <laughs> do you have three million credits? Uh not yet. Give me a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, all right. So, yeah, Lexi will grab power cell and uh, let uh, everybody know that she's ready to go down to the planet. Yeah, Whenever I can get down as well. Wait, I'm who's what? staying up in the ship? Out of curiosity. Yeah, well, I, I did kind of want to have somebody back here. Unless you guys need me, I'm in the med bay. So, I'm staying on the ship. All right. Uh, Need... Okay, cool. Yeah, as long as somebody yeah. stays. We might need the doctor. <laughs> Why? Because that's our only in at the oh. displacer place. Yeah, before I need to talk to Oz first. Uh, what? sure. Okay, so I, I come over to you holding my little drone. Um, Oz, can I want two things? I want another one of these, but I want them more autonomous. I want to be able to go, I want you to go inject that person, and then I don't have to worry about flying it back and forth. I want it to just come back to me and latch onto like a brace on my forearm or on my shoulders. I dabble in the software side of things, I guess. I could probably figure that much out. Okay, so I want two of them. I want them to attach to my uh, like my back or like on a harness, so I don't I don't have to carry them with my hands. Yeah. Um, I could yeah. probably get them to fold up so that they're basically indistinguishable from a distance. That's that's great. So that way, I if I can, I've already had to use it once on the dock. Sorry, not dock. The, uh, cap, I already had a you know remotely inject her with a or hit her with a patch. So if I can have two available, because I have to manually reload them, so I'll get I'll get that on the way. And I guess that means I'm staying here uh, for the time being. But if I do this, I want to go with a little side project of mine. All right. Sure. All right. And I'll just take the drone into the workshop, and that'll be my place for the next part of this mission. Uh, I'll also okay. say, by the way, uh, Tex and or anyone who can fit into it without breaking it, if anyone wants to take the uh, Icarus suit on for a test drive, feel free. Oh, Not going to be attacked the, up like, here. That's the, like, grab thing, right? Uh, yeah, Icarus suit is a 16 AC piece of combat armor uh, that will, uh, with a Type A power cell, allow you to fall from any distance. Uh, and I'll serve as a vac suit for 30 minutes. I thought you made that for yourself. Correct. So you uh, just want a guinea pig. <laughs> I, I, I've been wearing this thing around the place for a while. Uh, I actually used it. Oh, I way. thought you meant like while we were going down, you wanted to like have somebody re enter. No, I just. <laughs> if, I'm going to be staying up here, and I find it highly unlikely we're going to be attacked, at least, you know, on the ground up here. Well, um, I could uh, I could certainly use a little boost to AC since I apparently end up in the front lines way more often than Tex would like. You are wearing a shotgun. Well, that. yeah, that's more for like close encounters, like on a ship. But whatever, it's fine. I, I can deal with it. I'm trained. It's all right. Yeah, I'll try it. Sure. Just keep a few cells handy, and remember, falling doesn't hurt you. With that knowledge, good luck. Good. All right. I should note falls over three meters don't hatch you. Less than that, you won't be enough time for the gravitas to kick in, and you'll just fall. I, I feel like falls under three meters wouldn't hurt that much anyway. <laughs> well, you'd be surprised. It's like into spikes, that'd be different. I mean, that's still like... It's nine feet. Yeah. It's not that bad. No, that's if you like, fell off like a nine foot staircase into concrete, you'd still break your head. That's well, like two and a half cases. And that's under armor, right? <laughs> uh yeah, under armor. It's an it's a Icarus suit, which is weirdly what kind of spawned the whole Greek naming theme thing. Because that was just what it was called. Um just very quickly. Uh, the primitive drone can't really be upgraded. It has its single fitting, which is a weapon fitting. 
which is the jerry rig thing that you were looking to do, uh, Jace. However, a Void Hawk could be easily fitted for exactly the same purpose, uh, much better with expert systems and a proper medical support. Is the ship going to be, like, docked at Walker Aeon? Yes. Try so to. I can do some shopping while I'm here. It also has a 100-kilometer yeah. range. Yeah, with a 100-kilometer range. Or you could even go further. Stalkers are less um, uh, expensive, okay. so but less HP and all that good stuff. This is what um, I eventually want them to be able to do. I will eventually okay. want them to, because I'm slowly upgrading it to get to that point. But I eventually want them to be able to. I want them to set, I'll mark a target, have them go and stabilize that target, and or help assist me when I'm doing like field or medical operations. Oh, that also. Get to. Sorry, go ahead. You could buy something right now that would do that. And how much is that going to cost? Uh, it depends. Uh, what is the range you want on it? That's probably the biggest thing that I would ask first. For a single unit, um, no more than like maybe thirty yards. Okay, so you're you would probably want to look at say something like a stalker, which is relatively quiet. Um, but well, actually, no, they're the general workhorses. So uh, we're talking a thousand credits for the th the stalker, five thousand for the expert systems, and a further two thousand for medical support. You can further upgrade that with one more um, fitting, or you could go for something significantly uh, upgraded from even that, where you could, you could mess with it even more. Um, and we would be going with something like a Void Hawk, but stalkers are sort of the dia the, the default, uh, TL4 workhorses. So, all told, a little under 10,000 credits per drone. And um, you can find the drones in the equipment thing. Yep, I see them. So, so the stalker is what you'd, you'd, you'd want a stalker to start with. All right. Um, so, a stalker, a thousand, thousand expert credits. system, so 6,000, uh, medical support, 8,000. Uh, weapon fitting, 9,000. You don't even need the weapon fitting if you have medical support. Weapon fitting was the... Um... The jury rigged medical support yes, thing? Yes, okay. exactly. In that case, uh, yeah, just a stalker, which means 6,000 each. Uh, Jace, I'm going to need about 13, 12,000 credits to get this thing working. Okay, I'll give you 14. Nice, keeping the change. Anyways. Actually, if you give me enough time, and I'm able to, I could probably work on the expert system, if I've been a little loud. You're not here. Yep. You're oh, this isn't somewhere. Cool. Yeah, you're you're in a you're in a cellar somewhere. I'm gonna be working Literally. on this shit while they're <laughs> on planet saving your ass. Uh, I would like to buy a grev tank. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> you can go and talk to some people, I guess. Um, play Tell you what, how about I just make you one? So, uh, I, uh, Jace, I would read med the medical support fitting. I think that fits what you're looking to do. And expert systems is the other one, which basically says, means that you can, um, for this one, is as a main action command. Um, it means you could tell it what to thing. do and it would do it. You wouldn't have to pilot it manually, which means it could come back to you once it's done administering medicine. And I would argue you could give it, uh, especially maybe like later on with Jirani's help, you could um, give it subroutines that it will automatically follow. Um, and then you would be able to yell at it to do other stuff. That's Jirani's deal. I will work on yep. the actual mechanics. Yep. And you right now, also, it uh, still needs the basic core, which I need to fit to it, which is the expert systems. You could always spring for the uh, drone control link, which is like a separate ending upgrade you can get. Uh, so the stalker only has two encumbrance, which I believe means it can only have two things on it. Nope. Three fittings. 
three. Where's the fittings? Oh, there we go. Yep. All right. It has uh, a two kilometer range around you, so that's pretty good. It also shoots little darts with various substances um, that within 10 meters of itself to administer them. So pretty useful. Okay. And I'll have something I can put them on my, like a backpack that they can come off of or whatever. I'll say, yeah, stalkers aren't that big. You'd be able to, uh, to do that easily I'm not enough. That big. Oh, also if that's true. I mean, it would be like a backpack. It would, it possible. would be like a small backpack. I'll also spend the extra, uh, 2,000 credits just to make that work, make build a system for it. Mm-hmm. Okay. A station where they can inconspicuously deploy, then uh, return, recharge, that'll thing. Sounds All right. good. Alright, and then the other thing you might want to look into is uh, reinforced structure. So they can actually take a hit? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the stalker is is pretty low HP. You could bring it up to, I think, eight HP instead of five. Yeah, not much, but it's something. Well, to put it in perspective, uh, most weapons do, I think, uh, a D eight or something, or like the basic, like primitive melee weapon is a D eight, something like that. So you have a chance of it going down in one hit right now. I mean, you could do that, or you could just go suicide charge on it. I mean, and get a second one. <laughs> Depending on how much money you want to spend. I'm already getting you a second one. <laughs> all right, so it'll just be double that cost for for two of them. That's all. I'd yeah. I would I would like them to basically be able to take maybe a hit, so we can go with additional armor. So okay, structural Fourteen. reinforcement. 14,000 gets through all that. I'll use whatever spare scrap I can to make it actually look nice and I'll get to work on that. Okay. While you guys are doing the action movie shit. All right. That solves that. Uh, last question. Do I still have one system strain? From the um, psychic thing that happened? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on the journey back, by the time you get back to the planet, you will have been able to probably rest. Okay. Um, I'll I'll say that, and you can remove that one system strain. Cool. Thankfully, it wasn't too crazy. Nope. I mean, it. Except it, it killed me, but other it, than it that. did. It did do that. All right. Oh, where are my notes? Okay. So, I think. We got the housekeeping out of the way. But as you guys are headed back to the station to get the ship put up in dry dock, registered, all that stuff, and have the work start. And uh, then continue on, those of you who will, and those who are staying are staying. Jirani, you had an interesting experience. Let's leave it at that. Uh, after which you blacked out. And found yourself awakening a little while later. Well, you're not sure if it's a little while. You're not sure of much at all. It's dark as hell. You appear to be in some kind of cellar with a set of sort of like ladder stairs up to uh, a trap door. You are on a very makeshift cot sort of structure. Um... And there's a bedside table next to you with what looks like a small vial uh, or rather a small syringe of some kind of substance. You're not sure what. Does not look used currently. It's very small. Maybe one or two like cc's or milliliters. Um, what do you want to do? Oh, the hell is this shit? You can hear some vague talking up above you, but you it is indiscernible. You can't tell what they're saying. It's too muffled. But you can hear maybe voices or something above you. Um, I'm going to... If I... Well, try my best to 
send a message up to uh, Detective Dolan, and then one to Jace. The one to Jace will be uh, saying that there's this weird fucking cat lady who might be an ex-cop who is, like, using this drug that makes you feel like you can kill God. <laughs> and then I'm just, like, drink half the water in my canteen and just splash it all over myself, because, my God. What did I just have? Then I'll go ahead and uh, compose uh, a message to Detective Dolan saying that, well, at least describing this Celis that, uh... Uh, Cella, yeah. The cat. Yeah, and letting him know that, like, she can do some fucking freaky shit and make you act against your will. Okay. I'm gonna wrap that through my my fucking weird VPN thing. All right, cool, got it. Uh, you don't get an answer back right away, actually. Yeah, you probably you wait, you know, maybe five ten minutes, and you don't get an answer back at all. Oh, well, that's the thing. Uh, make sure everything is secured, like the connection and uh, the message, then start heading up and really, really hoping that Celis isn't here. Okay. As you go up the ladder, you sort of put your hand on a on the um, uh, sort of trap door like uh, structure there and begin pushing. It's actually really hard to push open. It's not, it does not appear to be locked. Like, you can kind of lift it, but it's heavy as shit. Doesn't look like it should be as it seems to be wood. Motherfucker, is somebody standing on this? I'm gonna just I'm gonna push a little harder. Okay, go ahead and give me um exert with strength. Uh any bonuses or modifiers? In this instance, no. Okay. You kind of start pushing as hard as you can for a second. Um, and you see, you manage to just push up a little bit and see what looks like some kind of bag that might be on on top of this trap door sort of thing. But at that point, your strength gives out and your, your arms sort of start shaking a little bit and, uh, and you, you're not able to exit. Alright, great. Guess I'll, uh, be down here forever. Should not have, uh, should not have taken this job. I just need to lay down on the bed and, like, make sure everything is okay. Nothing is, like, uh, like, I have nothing missing. Nobody's, like, trying to go through my ship. Okay. Doesn't seem like you, any of your stuff has been messed with too much. Um, again, you know, I mean, you, you, uh, your belongings are mostly on your person. If you were carrying anything that was like, like a backpack or anything like that, it'd be next to the bed, um, next or right next to the, uh, the, uh, nightstand sort of thing. So all that's in there is whatever you had with you initially, the bed itself or cot, which is really makeshift, uh, this sort of bedside table with a syringe and that's it. I guess I'll have to pocket this. I'm going to uh, take the syringe and secure it in my duffel, make sure it's, like, buried in a weird corner of it. Okay. Sure, that works. At that point, um, probably a few minutes go by, and you start to hear heavier, like, a, a set of heavy footsteps. 
um, across sort of what is your wooden roof uh, or wooden ceiling. Um, but when I say heavy, I mean probably three, four hundred pounds, if not a little bit more. And they stop a little ways away. They seem to cross over the and past the walls of what of the little cellar area that you're in. Um, and continue a little ways away. Shake my arms. I'm, I'm going to try opening the door again. Okay. Give it a try. There we go. Okay. So you kind of set yourself down at the bottom and you're like, I'm going to give myself a little bit of a run up this time. And, uh, Sort of as you step up, you jam your shoulder um, and arm onto the uh, the trap door as hard as you can, uh, relatively easily, popping what apparently is uh, a very heavy sack that was laid on top of it up into the air, and you kind of go barreling through, where you're greeted with a very interesting scene. First off. As you come up, you quickly, as you and are looking around, you see Sella, who has just jumped onto a stack of boxes, probably about 10 to 12 feet high, doing the whole cat raised fur, fluffed out tail, hissing uh, sort of uh, thing. The sack that you had just uh, pushed is now about two and a half feet in the air, apparently having scared the cat. Um, and it begins raining potatoes out away, a little ways away from you as a dog splicer that you have not met yet begins barking at the cat like incessantly. <laughs> um, and quickly taking all this in uh, about five or about 10 feet away from that, is what looks like a massive silverback gorilla that you have not seen either standing at a table who looks up quickly, sees you, takes in the situation, and yells at both the dog and the cat to calm down or else. And there seems to be a very highly implied threat there. But the barking and hissing continues. Is there anything you'd like to do now that you're presented with this particular scene? The cat lady is not Sellas, correct? Uh, the uh, Sella is the cat lady. Ah. The, she had a friend who, uh, one of her group, I guess, that was a snake guy. But that's not, he's not there. But yeah, it's just those guys. It's a cat, dog, and a gorilla. And the gorilla, at this point, is sort of looking around, and you see him reaching underneath this sort of makeshift table to a spot that you can't see currently. I lay on my back and just kind of, like, slowly put my hands up. like, did I interrupt something? Uh, the gorilla's eyes quickly flash to you, but flash back to Sella and the dog, reaching under the table, grabbing what looks like some sort of uh, very large, almost novelty-style gun with a tank on it of some kind. He pulls the trigger at the cat, and a burst of water streams out, dousing the cat in water. He follows that with hitting the dog, and both of them sort of turn to the gorilla, angry, but eventually begin to calm down. So, super soaker. Yep, that's exactly what it was. Except I don't think that that brand survived. <laughs> so, generic super soaker. Super space splicer soaker. Yeah. So, uh, that after a few minutes of them all calming down, the gorilla is sort of looking at you, just keeping an eye on you in general. Seems to be kind of in control of the whole situation. Um. Both uh, Sella and the dog sort of 
taking opposite sides of this space, which you now realize is in the back uh, corner of the warehouse that the um, uh, scientist works out of, uh, where you were spliced yourself, uh, appears to be... You're not entirely sure, but it's dark. it seems to be dark everywhere, including outside of the uh, warehouse. But, um... Yeah, uh, they each take their own corner, sort of sulking for the moment. Uh, hi. And then I'm just going to look over to Sela. It's like, how do we get back here? She just sort of glares at you. Um, and the gorilla looks over to you. Uh. You must be the new one. Welcome. Sella's spoken highly of your work, although she is a bit on the chaotic side, I suppose. Still, welcome. I have heard some news that you have some information that may be pertinent to Helping a friend of mine escape his custody. Oh, uh, um, thank you, but also, yes, um, I worked security for, uh, well, for, uh, my, uh, my cruise medic, and, uh, well, we were sleeping around in, in Midtown, I, I found some. I, uh, I found some information, and I wasn't sure who to really show it to, because I don't think that Dara would probably like this actionable intel. And then just slide over, like, the prison schedule and the, uh, the little thing, the little data chip with the uh, footage on it. Um, with a relatively practiced hand, uh, this gorilla individual sort of just picks it up, uh, slides it into his own data pad, and starts reviewing uh, stuff, as well as uh, glancing down at you know schedules and at what looks like uh, several bits of his own paperwork, um, letters and things like that, sort of taking it all in. Um, at that point, uh, seeming interested in something. Um, both Sela and the dog sort of slowly approach the table, kind of ignoring you, but also starting to look over everything. You you get a little, like, growl from the dog and a little hiss from the cat. You know, sort of a, this isn't over, but I guess it's over for now. Um, as they all start sort of looking over everything. That's cool. That just go sit in the corner. No need to run off. For now, what have you seen up above? It seems you were there at one point. Well, I can tell you that uh, there's a little blind spot at the back of the precinct where the camera can't really see you. And uh, there's also the dumpster back there, which... I guess doubles as a graveyard. Yes, for a long time. That's why that blind spot exists. This is not... That part is not so much news to us anymore. There are many stations that suffer from the same... <clears throat> defunction. Sella has used it several times to gather information. However, for the moment, it's not something we can do too much about. What we can do, however, is potentially save one more from finding their way there. So... 
I suppose after your trip the other night, I should ask you if you are willing to help with that since you seem to have the most experience here. At least with this group. Uh, that sounds like a great idea, but I just, I believe the transfer schedule for the best time would be, uh, uh and I'm just gonna, like, look a little bit closer at the transfer sheet, and I think it's gonna be, uh, Friday? So, I, I don't, I'm not sure how many days we have left. It's, how long was that out? Only about 36 hours or so. Oh. A relatively mild recovery time for what I've heard you managed to take. Which is how much? I, I'm sorry, I don't remember a lot. Sella says that you were given. And he sort of side eyes like he kind of knows. You get the idea he knows what Sella actually did, but he's playing, you know, diplomatic at the moment. Um, Sella says you were given one CC of her. Well, of a certain substance called Crescendo, that she and some of her friends have been creating. It's very useful in certain instances, but the toll can be rather high. That being said, it's also profitable. So hard to argue with it in our situation. Yeah, I can, uh, I, uh, I understand that deeply. Speaking of which, Sella, don't you have some people to meet? And, uh, see the cat sort of go, all of a sudden perk up, but like she forgot something, uh, looks across to the gorilla. Uh, right, I'll be back. And dashes off to... You can see it's a side door, not too far away. Um, and, uh, man, it's weird that it ended up this way, but okay. Um, door opens up, uh, and she sort of waves two individuals um, in what look like kind of like leather bomber jackets, um, both human, not spliced, in. And uh, in this low lighting, with your sort of cat-like, more cat-like perception, you can just make out one of them is wearing an insignia sort of patch on his shoulder, amongst many others. But this one stands out to you. It's familiar. A cobalt shark's patch on the left shoulder. And they sort of walk through and um, walk a ways away from you down um, to discuss something. Uh, I'm going to not be able to hide the very flattening of my ears. So just takes that in. Notices it, but doesn't say anything. Anyway. For now, I suppose we should give you some time to adjust. But you said Friday, potentially. That's only two days away. If that is when they're moving him, perhaps that is when we'll strike. Yeah, and, I just... Uh, uh, when they first brought him in, he was... Uh, 
I don't know what he did, but I don't think anybody deserves to be broken like that. No. No, none of us do. But it is a long and often repeating story of our time of our kind. Still, at least he was not found by any of the high city. The high city's security forces are ones to be avoided. They tend not to care too much if you come back or don't. I get it. The, the higher up you are, the heavier the hand that comes down. That's one way to look at it. Uh, there's one group there in particular that um, they're different. They come down here less to enforce rules, I suppose, or enforce the status quo and more for them, for pleasure. I hope you do not run into them directly yourself. And I hope that very soon they will not be doing that anymore. But for the moment, you still seem somewhat tired. And there's no reason for you to stay in a cellar. Um, Clyde, and he looks to the dog, why don't you escort a new friend? Jeronny is the name that I've been told. Or what, did you go with Billy? Uh, I went with Benny. <laughs> Benny oh, the Benny, <laughs> that's it. Um, Benny is the name I've been told. Uh, take him over to one of our more comfortable beds outside of the warehouse. We'll talk in the morning. Wow. Uh, thank you. And he just sort of gives you a slow nod and then goes back to the info that you gave him. Sort of see him writing little notes and things. Um, and uh, Clyde takes you out and down to the same sort of little houses that were built within the compound together. Um, to one of them that seems like a communal house more than anything else. Um, and there are a few uh, bunk beds. Some taken, some not. All kind of in varying sizes for varying sizes of people, or especially for those that are maybe a little bit bigger than your average human and require a larger bed. Um, but uh, if he finds you a little spot, a uh, lower bunk, sort of near a wall in, in a corner. Um, seems pretty well built. You don't have a an upstairs neighbor or anything like that. And lets you sort of sleep off the rest of the day if you want or do whatever. Oh, uh, on the way over, I probably just... Hey, uh, Clyde. I do, guess. You, do you know any, like, places nearby that are open for recreation or uh like supplies when the day opens or when the day comes so you can go to one of our stores we have some supplies is there something in particular you're looking for um well I I, I worked a little bit in uh, cyber security and uh, IT so I kind of like to take a look at what you guys have available maybe grab something that I might need that I haven't seen yet oh well I don't know much, too much about that but um you know what I'll, 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 I'll take you over to the flea market tomorrow they might have something they might not who knows it's a flea market could be one way or could be the other uh, yeah, that sounds good thank you Clyde didn't know just kind of like reach out to shake his hand uh, he kind of puts his paw in your hand um, and doesn't really do the shake thing, but then sort of realizes, oh, and then pulls it back and, all right, I'll see you tomorrow, and sort of dashes off. Huh. Um, that was remarkable. Yeah, like just, duh, that's 
a little concerning. I'm not sure if I'm ready for that sort of uh, behavior bleed. Anyway, for the rest of you, uh, at this point, you guys will be uh, done at the shipyard getting everything set up and be on your way back. If you're going to, uh, it's up to you, um, Johnny, if you want to do anything else tonight or if you just want to sleep off kind of a, what feels like a hangover, for lack of a better term. I'm just going to check in, like, let the guys, the crew know that, hey, you know, I'm, I'm still alive. Things are not okay, but I'm still alive. And, then just and you guys can communicate however you'd like, uh, but by the at the time that you wake up in probably about six hours or so, maybe eight, um, the rest of the party will be about to make Planetfall back towards uh, the city, and we'll pick up there in just a few, but I want to take just a couple minutes because i got to go to the bathroom. Um, but if you guys want to discuss what your plans are, and I'll say... Uh, for the purposes of this, if there's any, uh, you guys can conduct plans or planning um, sort of first thing in the morning. You'll be left alone for a little while. Um, so you'd have your data pad and be able to just chill. All right. All right, all right. Guys, I'm in really big trouble. Oh. Oh, I'm just gonna call this a five minute break on my end, but if you guys wanna keep or you know, keep Oh no, yeah, I, that that was in character out of character.
I would like to bomb everything. <laughs> for it. Find an assault suit. Dun, dun, dun. You might be able to. If that's what you want to do, we can do that. Just tell me what you want to do. And what uh what is this plan? TL four, right? Yep. TL four plus, I think, actually. I will double check. One second. TL four plus. Are there places to get like uh cyber enhancements here? Yes, there are. Okay. I think uh, I think Tex would tag along with Lexi just to make sure she doesn't get in any trouble. Lexi, wherever Shepard's she is not, by the way. Well, I would have had to pilot us down. So. Yep. I think it was just um, Oz and. Me and uh, Narisha were staying up top. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you guys would have had a, about a day and a half to do stuff if you wanted to. Oz, I'm guessing you're working on projects. I'm going to put together the drones in that time if I can. Yeah. Yep. Relatively simple. Thankfully, it's like they just come as kits and you can kind of put them together. All right. Sounds good. But yeah, I'll say it's a day. Put the two together. Make sure they're actually working. Mm -hmm. And then you still have a half day for whatever you want. I'll just add that to the power armor time. So I have four and a half days. Huzzah. Okay. All right. Four and a half days left. All right. Uh, Narisha, anything? Yes. Anything you want to do while you're on station? Um, I asked the doc to pick me up some pizza. Well, he just oh, fucked so... off to the planet, so... Oh, so I can go leave the ship and go buy pizza? <laughs> if you wanted to, yes, you can do that. <laughs> Damn it. It's a big payday, first thing. Let's buy a ship full of pizza. Yeah, I need my monthly supply of pizza. <laughs> I'm going to buy... $70,000 worth of pizza. <laughs> I, I want to go to every, maybe not every shop that's selling pizza, but I want to stop by a couple of shops, eat some fresh pizza. When we get back, there's fucking pizza. like pizza boxes just lining all the walls. Yeah, <laughs> like the entire cargo bay is literally full of just <laughs> stacks of pizza. pizza. section. Captain, like this isn't going to keep. Jones. I I made a deal with, with Pizza's R Us. Um, <laughs> it's Pizza Planet. <laughs> oh man, bringing it back. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna have to make an Italian planet that's just pizza and pasta everywhere. Oh my god! Well, no, just like make them have the they delivery thing. You the way they, they say hello is you have to you have to curl your index and your thumb together. That's the green. So excited! That's like her dream. I apologize to any. Uh... Possibly Italian audience members who may be watching hey. this. If you don't have anything better to do, <laughs> what's that coming to go? Oh, jeez, that's that's my spot on Italian. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. It's a me. Pizza. P pizza. pizza. <laughs> Fair. Well, um, assuming you're gonna go and get as much or slightly more than you can actually eat, uh with a going for good pizza around town i'll say uh if you want to just kind of go on a pizza bender for a day uh 50 credits um and uh you can have all you can eat across the station yay <laughs> all right so narisha has gone uh off i'm just gonna shout through the comms bring me a combo uh and that's all 
<laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Wonder so why that's... the ceiling that our inventory in our ship is just going to be made up of pizza and alcohol. Mm-hmm. Like I, I just feel like the water might just be replaced with vodka. At some point, <laughs> water I mean, let's be yeah. honest. Is there really, replace it. Is that really the worst thing? <laughs> Jeez. I mean, you guys are gonna be rolling con saves for a while. If it is, uh, what happens? You find out lactose intolerant. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. So those going to planet. Um, you guys. Uh, we got Lexi going. You're going for cyber stuff, cybernetics. Yeah, she's gonna go check out the cybernetic market area. Okay. Anything in particular you're looking for? Um, to be honest, I think she wants uh, she wants Tex to come with her, like like he had suggested. Uh, I think she wants his input. Sure. Okay. Yeah. You but, know, I, mean, uh, I was uh, I was thinking of uh, of uh, something. I mean, look at me. I mean, I have beautiful body. I, this will never change. This I will not. Uh, at all change it whatsoever. Uh, this is perfect. But uh, there are things that, you know, could be improved, such as, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, I don't know, uh, there's like, you know, neurological uh, improvements to be made uh, that can help, I think. I don't want to be smart or anything like that. I mean, like, you know, like faster or uh, maybe, uh, I don't know. What, 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 what do you think would uh, be good for me? Well, I imagine there'd be some kind of, uh, let's see, I, I, I don't think you'd want to lose your uh, fantastic, uh, you know, strong limbs. So I don't know if you... Oh, no, no. Of yeah, course so not. I, I don't know if there's any kind of implants that could just make you quicker or because you obviously want to, like, enhance your strength because yes, it's already yes, so that, immense. Yes, yes, that's what I mean. Uh, I could, uh, you know, be able to uh, not never be surprised ever again. Never. Uh, you know, there are the other things that uh, <laughs> they would allow me to have electricity come out of hands. So when I punch, it uh, hurts much more. I, I wonder if that would work, like if you had a metal, because you have, you got that sword, right? Is that a metal sword or is it like a plasma thing, whatever? It well, is. It, well, it's, it's metal. Yeah, so maybe like if you were holding onto your sword and you like shocked your hands, maybe you'd electrify the oh, sword too. I don't, I don't know. know. Uh, can Lexi like go ask like a somebody at a desk or something if that would work you're okay what exactly are you looking <laughs> for because that was hard to follow <laughs> you know uh, uh hands. eel skin capacitor mesh oh, is the exact <laughs> thing that she was mentioning but i mean she, she's just kind of like looking at the list of you know what they have to offer sort of thing and just kind of like speculating Okay. Um, you ask around. Some places do offer something similar to that, yes. So uh, would they? they would, would it affect the, her sword if she was to use that? Um, enhancement? Um, currently... I think you have a leather wrap, so maybe less. But if you took that off of it, right? Okay. Uh, yes, you could. You could argue that it could work on the sword to an extent. It would potentially, yeah. It would add something to the sword attack. So yeah. Uh, so <laughs> what could, did you? Well, you could also, you know, if you didn't want to have to worry about just shocking things, maybe you fight something that doesn't get shocked very easily. You could always have a sword pop out of your arm or something. <laughs> With body arsenal array, you can yep. provide retractable body weaponry. Oh, you know, I was thinking about some things like that. I'd like to have a, 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 a energy blade scalpel that I could hit a button and it expands into a katana. Is that possible? I feel like that'd just be equipment, not like a cyber yeah, thing. Uh, yeah, it's going to cost a lot, but maybe. Yeah. 
Oh, look at this. It's a uh, integral emergency vex suit. Oh, you like vex suits, yes? Well, I, my my gear actually already does that, though, so I don't need to have that incorporated into my body. I like to keep things that are doing weird pressurization stuff outside of my body, preferably, so I, I'm, I'm okay on that one. There's there's some things that I'd consider, but I don't know if I want to do them just yet. I understand. Uh, uh, okay, uh, what about the uh, Ghost Talker transceiver? Uh, this looks interesting. This means I no longer have to use phone. Yes, I can just think and then, you know, it would work. <laughs> Actually, I think it would. Is that how it works? Well, you, you have to like sub vocalize, but yeah, yeah, it would essentially be a phone in your head. It's like integrated Google Glass. Replaces oh, God, one yes, of your this. eyes. This. <laughs> yep, this. Give me this. I do not lo- I no longer want to have phone on me. I, yes, just if it would just be better just to have in my like, head, you know, better. Okay. Uh, the procedure will lay you up for a day. Um, as in you need to recover for a full day uh, and it will put some system strain on you. Wait, is it one of those things that we have to get it done here? Or can we just like buy the component and then have our crew do it? <laughs> I mean, you could. Here's the difference. There will be rules if you have the crew do it. <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, can Lexi like sign herself up for an appointment for like next day or something? Yes, you can do that. Yeah, she'll do. To get the Revenant wiring? I was really, really thinking about that, but I don't know. That's TL5. That might not be. Oh, yeah. Also, yeah, there's like some pretty stiff penalties for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess she'll she'll sign herself up for an appointment to come back uh, yeah. in like, I don't know, 20, 20 hours or something. Okay. The next day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a question that's not an immediate need like he's not going to get the procedure done today but um so for something like panspectral optics where you can get low light and thermal vision would you also be able to incorporate like a zoom into that for like better perception at long range or something hmm. just like a slight mod on it yeah i don't see why not it might be a little bit more expensive than the yeah, base but yeah it's I, I can't see why that wouldn't be a thing okay just uh, just something I, I got in mind. All right. Um, and each of those things takes a day to recover from? I would say that um, your initial recovery, like, you know, ICU style thing where you just need to be kind of watched over for a day after, or the day of and about 18 hours after you've gotten it done to make sure that you don't have rejection. Right. After that, then you're going to have some system shock. Uh, but that can slowly get worked off with time. That's not okay. a problem. Sure. Basically, if you're going to get a surgery, especially a cyber surgery, you can get as many as you want. You're still only down for a day to make sure you don't have shock or uh, rejection. But right. beyond that, um, yeah, it's not. Um, well, that's uh, crazy. that's something to keep in mind, Lexi. If you wanted to do more than one, you could always, you know, knock it all out at once if you wanted to. Yeah, I, I'm mulling over a few other options as well. We, we will see. Sure. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, and you guys tell me if you, this sounds like it's fair. Um. We're going to do a rejection check. It's a con save. Or uh, not really a save, exactly. Um, it's a uh, the base uh, physical save. If you do it at a professional place, you're going to get a plus 10 to that save. It's very high. Um, if one of the crew does it, it's all going to be the, the save uh, or the addition to the save. It's all going to be based on how well they do. Let's uh, not tell uh, Jace about this, yes? (laughs) Of course. Um, Honestly, I wouldn't want her working on me anyway. (laughs) No offense to her, but uh, I don't want to wake up with something missing or added that I didn't want. 
Oh, come on, you don't want a third arm? No, I, I really, I don't think a third arm would help a whole lot when I'm trying to fly. I just kind of need two. It's kind of built for two. Yeah. Actually, I would argue that if you get it done at a, let's not do it rejection. Rejection is the downside if you don't do the work correct. So it's not even on you, it's on whoever's doing the work. I think that'll be the way we'll do it instead. It makes more right. sense. I think it goes with the game better, too. Anyway, so. So you have an appointment for the next day? All right, who else? Uh, uh, Leaf, you doing any shopping? I'm just going to look for some power armor. All right. Um... You find your way to a uh, basically military industrial area uh, with various weapons, armor, etc. shown off. Um, you notice that it seems to be targeted towards uh, those individuals who might have their own private armies. Um, Close enough. <laughs> but you can pick stuff up there, yeah. Okay. So, uh, what, anything in particular you're looking for? Uh, well, since it's a, probably an assault suit. Assault suit? Yeah. All right, there is a bit of a markup just because of where you're at and yeah. uh, because these people are assholes. Uh, yeah. We're looking at 12,000 instead of 10. I mean, just Bye. an idea. Would you see if there's an S port? Like, that would... So you will also need type B power cells to make it work yep. per 24 hours. So keep track of that. Um, but they're relatively easy to pick up at regular price. So unless well, you want to buy them from this store, in which case it's to, it's like 100 credits more. So yeah, screw that. Yeah. All right. So who else we got? Um, Jace, are you working on anything? Um, were those drones completed from earlier? They are in the. If we're still on the same day, I think they're still in the process of being completed. But uh, I will it's say, it's been a day. They've been traveling for a little bit, and uh, at this point, the drones are completed, but they're on the ship. Yeah, but okay. uh, I'll so, say, if you wanted to do anything, uh, I think Oz probably would have shared some of the details of his project wanted you to help with. Uh, Oz is planning to work on his own cybernetics, so maybe getting some supplies for those would be a decent idea. Okay. I'll, I'll give you the money for him, but... I'll look around for cybernetics that he's, that he's listed. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything in particular you're looking for? Uh, gecko anchors and eel skin capacitor. Okay. Those are the two on my list. Okay. Yeah, you could go with Lexi and them as their... There, you could buy the components if that's the way you want to do it, so that you can install them yourself. Mm -hmm. um, that is the actual cost. Getting them installed by them is a further, like twenty percent fee above whatever the cost is. So, so we're actually saving a bit as well. Yeah. Uh, so in that case. Uh, your total cost. I'll throw up the forty thousand. All right, there you go. Which is thankfully easy math. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm just kind of glad to not have as much money. <laughs> Fair enough. So yeah, you're sitting on. Uh, you've got those two. So whenever the two of you meet up again, you can hand them over and do whatever. Uh, Lexi, if you're going for the Ghost Talker transceiver, um, eventually you will be going, uh, gonna have to go with, that's, uh, it will be 15 plus, 
two plus thirty. It'll be an extra three thousand, so eighteen thousand total to get them okay. installed there. Or if you want, uh, for less potential, uh, blowback issues, and it'll be a um. Or you could just go with fifteen and have Oz do it and see what happens. It's your choice. Oh no 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 no! She's gonna pay the eighteen. Okay. So it'll be eighteen the next day. And yep. um, un- under the guise of looking after Lexi, Texas basically just let the crew that's on the ground know that. Because uh, I don't think I guess Chase is with us. Well, let uh, let some people know that he's just gonna look after Lexi, just you know, the next day. Yep. But he's also actually gonna sign up for a pan spectral optics thing. But okay. he only wants it in his right eye, so only okay. one. And he wants it to look like his normal eye, so that's one proviso. Okay, so that is going to be a little bit more. It's uh, covert. So sure. And the Zoom. We're also, let's, and the, let's see and the Zoom. Yeah. So all together, including installation fee, we'll call it, uh, we're talking about about 22000 Sure. So there you go. All right. <laughs> Y'all decided, fuck it, I got money, cyber fucking shit. Let's do it. Yeah, you right. transhuman crew. He's, yeah. got a, he's got a plan, yeah. We got tra- we got transhuman crew in a few different directions right now, so... I think Lexi would follow in Texas footsteps. How much would it be to make uh, it look like it, it, oh, was, I, I was, it looked smooth on her? I was trying to do it, like, secret, so that even Lexi didn't know about it. Oh, 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 oh. I thought, yeah, yeah, okay. so, like, yeah, so that way, like, nobody Lexi knows wanted... that he actually did this. If Lexi was going for, um, well, it allows anything. for visual stuff. So I don't know. Uh, you said it would affect her eye, right? Or an eye? Yeah, I mean, there's like the base model, which is fifteen thousand, which is it looks kind of like it, a robotic eye. It's not really made, you know. It's the base, but if you want it covert, it's going to cost a little bit more. She probably wouldn't want the the eye looking weird. She probably want it looking normal, to be honest. If there was it's, an option. That, that. Me- All right, so. On top of your 18 for the um, Ghost Talker, uh, further 22 for a similar pan spectral optics. Actually, no, it'd be a further 20 for the pan spectral op- optics without zoom. Wait, just to make it look like a normal eye? And the installation fee, yeah. Well, that uh, no, no. I think Lexi just wants the uh, the the thing, the transceiver, to look like an okay. online, not to add in pan spectrum. Uh, correct, okay. correct, correct. Okay, I understand then. Fair. <laughs> she just wants the <laughs> eye to look natural. It's it's, yeah. it's the same price as the um uh, as what you were paying there, Saber. Uh, so twenty two yeah, total. Twenty two. Okay. Okay, I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to confuse you. I got all confused. <laughs> all right. Meanwhile, Johnny, what are you... Uh, you get hauled down to the flea market. Is there something you're looking for? Uh, Actually, yes. I'm trying to see if they have, uh, like, electronics. Give me a notice check with wisdom. You got a relatively large flea market to deal with here. Okay. Yeah, there's a there's a couple of stalls with various electronic parts and pieces. Um, there are there seems to be one that seem that's more computer parts, and there's another one that seems more industrial stuff um it's still control boards and things like that but they see it seems to be more geared towards uh industrial machines i'm gonna snap a couple pictures of those and uh send them to ozzy you you need these okay yeah as you get that pretty quick All right. Uh, okay, so I'll just 
read it, just set, paint the cat and say, uh, you might want to see this, as well as everyone else down there. It's just, it's a picture of uh, a table full of various electronic implements, uh, generally geared towards industrial equipment, mm -hmm. uh, control boards, um, solenoids, stuff like that. Some of it could be considered scrap, some of it is specialized. Mm hmm Is there any, like, is there anything else attached to the message, or is it just picture? No, just that. Literally just picture in the question. Do you need like, any of this? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, is any of it fun? Uh, what is What exactly do we have here? I doubt there's any pre-tech, but, you know, some uh, scrap might me... be good. You can go ahead and give me a fixed check with wisdom. So you're using your knowledge of what all this stuff might be. Because regardless, Eleven. I'm going to purchase uh, some. Eleven. Like computer parts. Okay. Or data slab parts. Okay. Interesting. Looking over the uh, the more industrial stuff, you do see what looks like A few control boards for uh, industrial size, like automated drones in spa for space drones, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, industrial size, though, so pretty beefy. Um, you see, I think three. Interestingly enough, what looks like three uh, guidance systems to some kind of munitions. Not hmm. entirely sure where the fuck they came from. Um, but at an 11, uh, you just see sort of mostly hidden underneath a bunch of others, uh, like just in a pile of stuff, you see what looks like a corner of some very, very, very densely packed circuits, uh, much more so than the surrounding stuff. But it was very difficult to see. Okay. So those three items, the circuit boards, the guidance system, and the uh, sort of small bit, I'll just kind of crop. I'll send it back pictures of those three items, basically. Yeah. So you see the uh, circuit boards, the guidance systems, and the... Uh, was it the motherboard for the drones? Or the motherboard that... Uh, there's a densely packed grouping of circuits in a very odd shape, but you right. can only barely see it underneath a pile of stuff. You, basically, you can't see the whole thing. Yeah, well, this kind of... That one, I will add a red circle, a very big, thick, multi-done red circle, and an exclamation point. And that should get the message across. Okay, uh, don't go ahead and just pick out the little data slab parts that I want for the black slab that okay. I want to eventually build with uh, Ozzy, and then I'm going to go ahead and just, like, nonchalantly try to pick out these parts, like, oh, I guess I could use these, and just add how much for these. Alright, uh, so starting off, let's go with the black slab stuff. Um, you can get most of the components you'll need to the point where you won't need too much beyond that. For... Uh, initial uh, offer or uh, is going to be about 7,000 credits. Um, the guidance systems are 500 credits each. At least that's what they're saying. And uh, the drone controls are pretty much the same, actually, about 500 each. Um the other thing, you sort of fish it out from underneath this pile. And I mean, like, this is a big, like, you know, those plastic fold up tables that are used at every, you know, like, big get together. There's like four of those here, and they're just piled high with stuff. Um, and kind of fish this thing out. And it is, uh, it's interesting. It is what looks like a wiring harness and maybe a somewhat damaged circuit board to something, 
but it stands out ab- above everything else as m- much at, at a much higher complexity. Circuits, uh, chips, just packed into this thing. Um, it is not your typical piece of equipment. Um, the owner, or the uh, the I guess the person selling the stuff, has no idea what the fuck it is. Just that it looks pretty and has a lot of circuits on it. Um, oh, and offers to sell it to down. you for. What's Just, that? I'm gonna try to hide one down. It's like, hey, listen. I mean, it's obvious that this is some weird stuff. I just want to pay for the raw materials here. Um. Well, it took quite a bit of work to find all this stuff, so I think you should pay me for it. Oh, well, I mean, I'm definitely gonna pay you for it, but I'm not gonna pay like 800 credits for just this hunk of mostly junk. Well, Tell you what, you, you give me an honest, you give me an honest quote on this, and I'll, uh, I'm actually maybe give a little extra. But I don't, I don't know, I don't know how much I'm gonna. I don't think this is worth more than. I don't know. You tell me. Everything I can, else I can maybe lose worth like five hundred. Half of this. So. Well, everything else is scrap for the most part, it, but. This is all electronic scrap. It can be useful. Uh, everything else on this table is worth 500. I'll say 500. Fine. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, okay, let's see. 7,000 for the data slap shit. Mm-hmm. But it has everything you need for the data slab. Just need to put it all together. And I'll, I'll just give him, like, all right, you know what? I appreciate that. And give him like an extra seventy five credits. Okay, so five seventy five for the weird kind of tangled up wiring harness of crazy. And how much and for the extra stuff that uh twenty five hundred if you're buying the two drone control units and three guidance systems. Twenty five hundred total for those five pieces. Because they were on the five hundred table too. So 2,500 plus... Okay, yeah, I'll go ahead and pay that out. Slough 31,000. And, uh, oh, well, shit. Uh, you got a spare bag for all this? Um, yeah, it'll hand you sort of a, a garbage bag, basically a small, like, gar- waste paper bag. All right. I'll go ahead and stuff all the uh, data slab shit into, like, however much room I still have in my... Uh... Oh, I should still have a lot of room. In the duffel, all right. Yeah, and then yeah, I'm going to okay. put all of uh, Oz's stuff in the bag. Cool. Also, let Oz know uh, when and where to pick it up from, like, whichever fucking elevator he takes to come down. Uh, I'm going to send that information to Tex. Yeah. I don't think he realizes I'm in orbit. About 10 hours away. By spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> By super futuristic spaceship, too. So, you know. 10 hours um, away in Mach 4. How long by fall? Uh, well, if you just decide to jump out, it depends on... I know, I know it probably won't work, but if I just, you know, dropped the mech out, I'd probably survive. Anyways. Uh, well, well, no, you would drift in space forever until you die. Yep, well. pretty much. Because that's how orbits work. Yep. <laughs> if I had some form of propulsion, you know, just shot the map pistol up. I don't know. Anyways, if you had enough 
Delta V, then sure, but that would take a long time. Spaceships would, are better. Let's just I'd say I'd figure that. it out anyway. <laughs> it's a lot of math. Spaceships slash thrusters in general are better, yes. All right, so we're trying um, to get DOS on the line. <laughs> um, all right, so as you're finishing up shopping, Jirani, uh, Clyde, who has gone off to uh, talk with some of his parent friends or people he knows anyway um seems to take a call from on his his own compad as you're sort of finishing up uh the transaction comes back to you and says all right it seems like we got some uh some stuff to do uh you might need to come with me because um i think we're moving up the plan you don't know about the plan do you okay well you're gonna come with me and uh we'll go and drop uh, this off and uh, head right back and, and and Mr. H is gonna gonna get you up to date on the plan. All right, come on with me. And he grabs you and sort of starts walking towards the um the compound. Okay. All right. Uh, meanwhile, everybody else is shopping and all. And <sighs> if there's anything else you guys want to do, that's fair. But, uh, Tex, I think you've been the main contact outside of Jirani at this point. Um, you get an email sort of updating you from Detective Dolan about the stuff that Jirani has found. And updating you about, uh, the moving the, uh, prisoner sort of plan. Okay. That seems to be happening instead of Friday night, early Friday morning. So basically in like eight hours from now. Okay. Meanwhile. And that info just came to me or did he? Also it would have just Jirani? come to you probably. And I don't think he would have sent it to Jirani. Okay. Purposely, at least not right away. Um, he might have sent something to Jirani a little later, but... Initially, you would have just sent it to you. Um, but yeah, Jirani, you get moved to back down to the compound uh, to talk to Mr. Gorilla Guy again, uh, who you now know goes by the name Mr. H. Um, and there are a few other individuals here. You have uh, Sella and Clyde. And a what looks like a splicer of a reptilian nature, maybe a lizard type of something. You're not sure. Can't place it right away. Um, and as you arrive, uh, another group arrives. Uh, actually, two other groups arrive at the same time, sort of. Uh, what looks like a, an aquatic splicer. Uh, looks like some kind of maybe shark sort of looking splicer Real as toothy. well Got it. yeah very very toothy it has a uh, sort of weird almost scaly-ish but micro scaly skull or not skull but uh skin hello my name's yeah. bruce very very <laughs> much kind of that style <laughs> individual and um standing next to him are uh those two individuals from the Cobalt Sharks you saw walk in before, all entering kind of with you and Clyde as you come in, as you walk inside. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to try to just take a look over at a, basically like scoping out uh, the Cobalt Sharks because... Uh, they definitely okay. don't recognize me, and I don't have any reason not to fucking take a good look at them. See right. if I see any, like, identifying markings as to, like, which uh, greater shark they're following. Sure. I actually have that info. Hold on. Do-do-do, where is it? Okay. Um... You notice that uh, 
there is a it's not as a sort of a variation of the col you see the cobalt sharks patch and then you see below it uh a variation a different kind of patch than you've ever seen you've seen like the one for like hammerhead sort of sits underneath the regular cobalt shark uh insignia um with a hammerhead shark this is one that you don't recognize immediately but you have heard about it this is the one it's not mako it's blue um and looking up you actually see that as a another two or three aquatic individual uh sort of uh splicers walk in um a little behind your group as you walked in you actually catch that this individual who uh is standing here uh with the cobalt sharks also has a patch on with a blue shark underneath it. And as you walk in, uh, Mr. H sort of looks around. All right, well, it looks like we're all here. The plan has been moved up. We're going to free Jera, and then we're going to take down the station up in the high city. It will be one night to be remembered, and maybe they'll begin to take us seriously. And, thankfully, we have a little bit of a new inn, thanks to our new friend. Any sort of gestures to you, Jirani. And that is where we're going to end for this week, because I'm starting to get a headache, and I need to be done for now. Fair enough. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Mostly a shopping episode, but uh, setting up a little bit. We got some stuff established. Uh, I'm so happy to content. get the ship up and running. Yep. Should uh, in game, it would be another two days until the work on the ship is done to get it working properly. No, it'd be another day because you guys had the one day there and then, yeah. I'm not sure what else to buy. Uh, just some spare ammo would be good. Otherwise, save yourself, I'd imagine. I've got plenty of ammo. All right. Well, I and mean, honestly, let me let me check something real quick. Uh, I was gonna say, do we think we could do? No, you don't have enough for that. Uh, so it's just, do we could do with a fighter? This is on board. Probably not with this ship, I don't think. Yeah, yeah so. Couldn't. Like, we already got a shuttle to deal with, so. Correct. I mean, you could always go get a chain sword. <laughs> you got the power armor. I mean, that sounds fun. <laughs> I was thinking maybe, you know, a. Uh, uh, was that dermal armor? Down payment on a Mac. <laughs> you could do that. You could totally do that if you wanted I don't, to. I don't know who would have a mech that could be down paymentable. <laughs> Probably it's just would be a lot less materials. Let's just turn this into Anthem and everybody gets a fucking power armor. <laughs> yes. I actually, I, I just downloaded that again. Money to do it. Yeah, I picked that up for like 10 bucks. It's, yeah. worth, it's worth $10. Yeah, that's... Oh, that's Anthem? Yeah, fun. absolutely. Yeah. It's fun. I, I made Not a mech... more than that, but... Yeah, I made a suit based off a of Ta. Like, it's fucking shiny silver. Like, it's just a big, huge hulking dude with a shield. And then he does, like, fire and lightning. <laughs> nice. They just charge through everybody. <laughs> one of the Colossus awesome. is the best frame. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, Colossus is awesome. So I'm debating yeah, on getting a hover cycle so I can do jousting oh, matches I, with people. I was <laughs> actually going to do that, too. Boy, like, Ty, Ty used to have, like, he fixed up an old hover cycle back when he was a kid. So he kind of wants one again whenever we get to a planet where we need it. Oh, that'd be great for like fucking just quick get some vehicle stuff and shove them in there in the uh, yeah. the cargo bay. You guys would be fine with that. It'd be fine. Yeah. Well, um, before we get too much further off the uh, the track here, thank you everybody for watching, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Bye bye.